Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another unboxing video and this is a very, very special one. When I do these videos, there are many box sets that I have on a list that I'd always like. Um, I bet we've all got them, haven't we? You know, box sets we missed out on, box sets that are just too much money or they become even more expensive as they've gone further and further out of print. And I get asked numerous times by people saying, oh, Phil, why don't you feature this particular band or this particular box set? And I feature what I can, um, what I can within my budget um, or what I'm asked to review. But there are some that are just out there on the outer reaches of the collector's universe. I'm very lucky to have patrons and YouTube members who help, help you know me do what I do here. But just before Christmas, one of my patrons... Nikki Sophian made a donation to Now Spinning Magazine, which has meant I've been able to go after some of the box sets I've always wanted to feature on this YouTube channel and on the Now Spinning Magazine website. And also, at the same time that this happened, a guy called Martin got in touch with me and said he had a copy of this particular box set that he never opened, but he wanted it to be with a fan who loved music and maybe I would feature it on the channel. Even then, although Martin made a, an absolutely amazing offer, um, it was still really, really expensive. However, thanks to Nick and his donation, I've been able to get a copy, a brand new copy. And the box set is Unburied Treasure by Gentle Giant. I bought the Wishbone Ash Vintage Years box set for my 60th birthday and it was the most expensive thing I'd ever bought in my life and I was really apprehensive about whether it was going to feel it was worth the money but as soon as it did arrive and I took the lid off I knew it was worth every single penny and Vintage Years by Wishbone Ash is my favourite box set. I quickly looked around to see what other things Madfish had done thinking that maybe this is a chance to get something else, um, you know, at that time. And this was there, but it had already started to go out into the outer stratosphere. It was sold out. Um, I think there were two pressings, one with the autographs and one without. Um, I've managed to get one with the autographs. And so I want to... This, this, um, this review is going to be in two stages. I'm going to now show you, for those of you who might be looking at this or looking at it on discogs or ebay i'm going to show you exactly what's in the set and show it literally as in the most detailed fashion as i can um, as i do on this um, channel and so it isn't just holding up to the screen i will go through everything that's in the box but equally at the end for those of you who want to fast forward to that bit i'll give you a little bit of my journey towards gentle giant and also ask all the uber gentle giant fans out there how should I or what should I listen to first in this box? There's a few albums I know really well, but there's a lot I don't. So I shall come to that at the end. Anyway, let's have a look under the lid and see what's in this Gentle Giant Unburied Treasure box set. Right, here we go. A look inside Gentle Giant's Unburied Treasure. This is an absolutely enormous box set made to look as if it's carved in stone um, it weighs a ton it's absolutely huge and I want to give all of you who might be looking to get this a chance to see exactly what is inside and make up your own minds and I'll also be asking questions at the end for gentle giant fans to give me some guidance on how I navigate my way through this enormous treasure trove of unburied treasure from Gentle Giant. The lid lifts off like an iPhone box. <laughs> it's absolutely well made and put together inside. The first thing we see is the hardback book. I'm going to go through this in the order of how it appears in front of me. I think that's best and in some ways you'll understand why I do that um, and I'll do my best um, for you to see everything if I've got enough room on this small table 
So the first thing I said is this hardback book. And you look at the girth of this book, it's hardback, it's huge. Um, as I open it up, the first thing that I want to show you is this signed print, signed by all the members of the band. The real autographs, you can actually see where the ink is bleeding through on the back. And this is why these Madfish box are so amazing. The Wishbone Ash Bomb also had signed prints from the band uh, and many of the others do as well. And that's why they're so collectible and also so wonderful to have as a fan, not a collector, as a fan. The book itself, and I'll do my best to try and reduce any glare, of which there will be some. Um, it goes through each chapter, the prologue, the birth of the band, acquiring the taste, goes through each album. Um, the Just make it a bit more room. There's lots of memorabilia, as you can imagine. Uh, press ads from the time, gig, flyers, photographs. The whole band are involved. Um, there's absolutely such a wealth of material here to, to look at, to read, to be part of. So as you play the albums, you can look up the story behind that particular period in the band and really, really immerse yourself in it. All the album artwork is replicated, all the gatefolds as they were, the lyrics are displayed as they were. Um, I'm into chapter three near Acquiring the Taste. You've got letters from the record company, quotes, stories from each member, recollecting what it was like during this time in the band itself. Press cuttings, reviews, as I said, the album artwork, the lyrics, and then we're on to Three Friends. Some great photographs. Um, as I say, the lyrics again, stories, quotes, lots of rare stuff. And in chapter five, we come to what was my entry point to the band many years ago. Um, although when this actually came out, I had, I'd still never heard of them. Um, but this is, Octopus is a great album, great cover as well. This is replicated exactly as you would expect it to be. Um, again, lots of great photographs, stories, huge chunk of stuff on that. Then we're into The Glass House, which is another great album lots of behind the scenes photographs all the credits front and back artwork is replicated lots of photos i've never seen before power and the glory which is another fan favorite and again in depth stats analytics uh, you know train spotterish almost like you know been a detective going through the band's history you know how this has been compiled and pulled together in freehand which is another great album an interview some press ads and stuff and column inches from music press at the time an interview so it doesn't matter which album it is the amount of memorabilia and information on, on each one is roughly the same. Um, Playing the Fall is a great live album. There's a gatefold, some press uh, reviews from the time, a missing piece. And again, the artwork. And we'll see that that's, that artwork is actually included in a very innovative way inside the box, which you'll see in a few moments. Giant for the day. And that artwork is also included in its own way separately in the box. Then Civilian, which is the last one. Some great life pictures and then memories of the old days. Basically bringing everything together. That there's no loose ends and then pictures of the band at the time of doing this box set. Uh, which is fantastic and there's also a video online of them actually unboxing this set for the first time as well so that is the box sorry that is the book and the signed print part of the box next in the box is 
the official live it's not i don't know if this was a program so those of you who are massive fans of gentle giant please tell me if it is or isn't but i remember this being included in the live playing the full album it was the booklet that was in the double live final album and this is being replicated exactly as it was because i remember it i no longer have that um due to the great vinyl call in the 90s which many people of my age seem to have got involved with unfortunately and um, but i remember this really well and that's nice to have that in place next which i'll bring up separately because i won't be able to show it you in one shot is a poster for power and the glory Next is another poster, but this one goes back further. This is one of the first posters and was featured in the book, which is Gentle Giant at Union House St. Paul's Road. So that is also coming up on the screen now. And then, and I have to be very careful how I take this out of the box, it's a jigsaw puzzle of the missing piece. How apt. So I hope it doesn't collapse now as I'm doing this live. Um, but you can see it wants to. Um, and I'm sure if it falls apart, I'll never put it back together again. But there is a jigsaw puzzle of the missing piece with a missing piece. Excellent. Put that to one side. I think I've survived. Uh, next in the box is another book. Um, and I'll just show you. In fact, I'll show you. Before I show you this book, I'll get this out because it gets damaged. This is a mask for Giant for the Day, which was included in the albums at the time. The idea was you cut that out and stuck it on your face course no one did and the discs underneath control cells everybody i'll come to that in a minute and this is the tour history um which is relevant as well to the discs obviously because it's all the tour history but I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment um this is also a it's a soft battle but you can see also it's big and this goes through everything from the time when the band started there's that poster again from 1970 onwards literally date by date what was going on what was in the set lists where they were playing the stories behind each each event as well what was going on so not only have you got the book which tells you the history of the band you've got this which tells you the history of the live the live part of the band the tours the gigs what it was like playing those gigs again more memorabilia more posters as well but each of these write-ups gives you eyewitness um, reflections on what it was like, what they were touring, what was going on. Um, so I'll try and make sure you see as much as I possibly can show you. Um, and it goes through literally year by year. And it's not just a list of things. It's a story in itself. I think this is amazing. And I'll show you um, something that's important as well, part of this. Now... The box set includes tons of live material and as it comes to each live CD the font changes uh, artistically to, check, to, to mirror the colour on the front of the CD cover but this tells you then the story of that live gig, what was going on when they played that gig and you actually have the gig to listen to and this happens all the way through this book. And here's another one uh, in sensor 1973 and again and as you go through you'll come across so every, all the live material that you may be unfamiliar with you can look it up in this book this Torino 73 and as I say they, they, they mirror the colour of the font with the artwork that they've used on the CD perhaps it makes it easier to find I just like it um, and I think it's really really fantastic um that you can do that you can cross reference there's another one st gillen 1974 with a red font to, to match the red uh, design and that goes all the way through the whole history of the band live i'm only where am i now part five mid to 90 late 1975 now so you can see that they, there's no skimping on this set at all Nothing at all. There's another one, Basil 1975, um, which tells you about the, the gig that you can find in the box. Some great pictures again that I've never seen before. There's just so much stuff in this. Lots and lots of 
information. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm, I mean, probably going on to those of you who might have already got this box, for those of you who are going to hunt it down, just look at the, the wealth of text over each, each entry, each gig. It isn't like, oh, yeah, and then we played the Blah Blah Forum. Next, we did this. These are the dates for the rest of the tour. It's everything. You know, BBC Sight and Sound. Coming up to 1979 now. 80, the final days. And we're out at the Roxy 1980, and then the information on the set itself. And there you have it. Right, which brings us to the box of discs. So there's absolutely tons of stuff here. Um, I did wonder about showing you everything in case some of you think this is too much, but you can always fast forward to my summer if you want. Now the first disc, remember at the time when this came out, Stephen Wilson had only done one 5.1 mix of Gentle Giant stuff and it was on the album Gentle Giant so this is the Blu-ray disc of course since then he's done others um, each of the discs come in a gatefold sleeve with the credits and the original artwork and each disc comes in a little inner sleeve so they don't get scratched and each disc as well comes with the artwork for the album um, so I'll show you the the gatefolds but just presume that each each disc has the artwork as well so I don't need to take all of those out this is the live one playing the full again mimics the the original gatefold and then the albums are basically kept in place by these little cellophane wrappers so which are quite tight around the discs but they keep them all in place so they don't rattle around as if you're going to throw the box all over the place this is the missing piece civilian giant for the day this is a live one the Roxy 1980 so on the live ones you've got all the timings of the tracks and also a bit of memorabilia for each one as well. In fact I'll do a batch of live ones now uh, for you so you can have a look at these. Just bear with me as I try and retrieve them. This is Munich 1976. You can see some of these tracks look they're like 18 minutes long, 15 minutes long so this is proper prog. It really is. Hollywood Bowl, 1972, one of the earliest ones. Where you've got tracks are nearly 25 minutes long. This is one from 1971. St. Gillen, 1974. Cleveland, 75. Basel, 1975. Pinewood Studios Rehearsal 1977 and the last one in this batch is Paris 1976 again with lots of memorabilia as well next is I'll take this one out next and this is Municipal Auditorium 1972 Chester, 1977. There's so much live stuff. 1973, Torino. Essen, 1972. Nineteen seventy-three. Monster, nineteen seventy-four. I mean, there is so much. Dusseldorf 1976. This one is a double one. There's a double album here. Um, absolutely tons of stuff. Look at violin solo and everything. Um, brilliant. And the last batch, which in this, the way that this box was compiled, seems to be a lot of their classic ones. Octopus. The first album. Acquiring the Taste, Three Friends, A 
glass house. Power and the glory. And freehand. And as I say, they all come in with the artwork on the disc and also with little paper sleeve paper sleeves to keep the discs nice and safe as well. So that is a quick shufty through unburied treasure, the gentle giant giant box set. So that's unburied treasure, an enormous box set from Madfish Records covering this amazing prog band, Gentle Giant. It's 30 odd discs, isn't it? And as you've seen, absolutely form of stuff. Now, my journey to Gentle Giant is a mixed one. I had Octopus on vinyl, playing the Fall on vinyl, and I sold them in the great vinyl call of the early 90s, where many people of my age group did similar things. I don't know, we took the eye off the ball, sun was in our eyes, I don't know why that happened, but it just did. And so, on vinyl, the only one I have remaining um, is this one, uh, which is a, for the sake of it, pretentious, pretentious which was a compilation where um, the giant had a safety pin through his nose as he obviously came out in the late 70s when punk was everywhere. <clears throat> and Gentle Giant's music was an anathema to the way punks probably view things. I did buy other things, um, so I'm not starting from scratch. Power and the Glory, the Steve Wilson um, Blu-ray CD set in the glass house I still have with the etched front and um, Edge of Twilight, which was a two CD compilation and the Octopus um, Blu-ray CD as well. And my other connection to uh, Gentle Giant was actually with Kerry, Kerry Manier. And that's because my wife, uh, who plays violin, whose picture is above me, she taught violin in a school in Birmingham where we lived, and the guitar teacher there was Kerry. And I remember Sue coming home and saying, um, oh, um, the, the guitarist used to be in a band, you know, um, quite well known, apparently. She said, I, I don't know who they are. And I said, who is it? She said, oh, he used to be, he used to be a keyboard player and cellist in Gentle Giant. I couldn't believe it. So I said, well, tell him, tell him I know all about the band. I've got a couple of his albums and stuff. And she, she went off and then we met him. We went round to his house in Sully Hall and we had a cup of tea and he talked about it. And he didn't seem, he didn't seem to look back that favourably at his period in Gentle Giant. But this was kind of like the early 90s when the CDs are just about, to, well, they were around, weren't they? But he was, you know, things were being reissued and you could tell there's a little bit of kind of like maybe... Not bitterness, but you know, musicians who are seeing things released and they're not seeing any money from it. But he was still writing music. But obviously, this came a lot later. And there's an unboxing video on YouTube with the band, including Kerry, all sitting around a table, taking the lid off and being absolutely enthralled by what, what this is like. And this is one of these box sets where some people say, what are you going to wade through that many discs? Are you ever going to play them all? And I do. I do play them all, and these these kind of sets are a treasure trove, um, and this is unburied treasure, because there is so much to explore. Um, it was the same with the Wishbone Ash one. I was more familiar with that band. And as you can see with Gentle Giant, I've got a handful of their albums. A handful. and But having all of this around me, from the posters, the jigsaw, um, the albums, the, the, the tour book, the book itself I can like a laser beam pick an album out of this box that's just out of shot here uh, that you've just seen and then look up how they gigged it look up what was behind it who did it the artwork and everything else and just absolutely almost feel that the band is around me as I as I listen in to them and there's so much live material and I'll be honest at this time of doing this review I've had the box about a week. I've listened to some of the albums. I've not gone near the live stuff as much. I believe that the live stuff kind of improves in quality and stuff, but it's all um, sound recordings. It's not like um, there's no bootleg stuff or anything. Um, but 
if you are a Gentle Giant fan and you have this, please in the comments say, Phil, you need to, I would advise you to play this, this, this and this, you know, to really get a feel for this. As I say, I know Octopus playing The Fall. I've already played that and I love that one, which is why I went there. And obviously Pound the Glory and the Glass House and stuff, but there's so much stuff. I mean, what is it about Gentle Giant that makes them so loved, but equally on the outside of the big prog bands, the Yes, Genesis, King Crimson. Um, what is it that puts them out there? I'm not going to put Pink Floyd into that camp. And is it is it because their music was that much more complex, that much more not quite as accessible? Because obviously as we went through the 70s, Gentle Giant with the pressure of the record companies did start to shorten their songs and they're kind of, ex they're kind of stretching out in live concerts as they... And you can imagine how difficult that was with the fans who really liked the intricate stuff from the early years, alienated against the newer stuff. And General Giant were kind of caught between two, a rock and a hard place really, trying to please the record company saying, where's the single? And equally alienating the fans who'd been with them all the time. So you can see why it kind of fell apart towards that end of the, of the decade really. But I think their music is a challenge. I remember reading once that um, people... People in Mensa, one of the most popular bands of people who were in Mensa at the, in, during this period, were Gentle Giant fans. This is really complex music. And I think one of the songs to me that summed up why Gentle Giant were like, unlike anything else, was Knots from Octopus. That really is out there, I think. Um, but it just shows how clever they were, you know, Kerry being a classically trained composer, um, you know, and absolutely, they're all amazing musicians. But this is an amazing box set. And this is one of these things, as you saw, it's autographed. I feel so lucky and blessed to have a copy of this sitting in front of me that I can just enjoy now. And I will enjoy it and keep playing it and really get to know these tracks. Um, um, and that book tracks <laughs> albums and CDs there's such so much stuff in it so much live stuff and the live albums as well and and that's that's I've said many many times that's what's so wonderful about physical music I, I'm sure probably all of this exists on Spotify or somewhere I could go and stream some of it but it just wouldn't give me it a bit, it would feel like driving past a restaurant and watching people eat and thinking, trying to imagine what, what that's like. Whereas here, I'm in the restaurant, and the food's out in front of me, and um, and I can smell it and taste it, and it's part of me. Uh, but this this has been so well put together. Well, Madfish have continued down this line. They really are. They really are a label that I've said this before that thinks through the eyes of a fan, and I don't. I, Maybe someone at Fish will say, no, they do. But I can't imagine them sitting around the table saying, can we do this? And someone no, no, can't do that. It's not worth it. They actually think, would the fans like that? I think they would. And they put it in the box. Um, and that's why it's called Unburied Treasure, because it's here and there it is. It's a very hard box to find. Um, but, you know, it's just magical. And again, a huge thank you to Nick Yusofian who's made this possible thank you so much for all of your support and thank you for watching this uh, video um, and if you are a Gentle Giant fan list down what your favourite Gentle Giant moments are tracks are albums are and if you've got this box set please let me know what what live CD I should put on next so take care everybody remember music is the healer and the doctor and let Naspany Magazine be the light to shine the dark in light in the darkness at these troubled times that we find ourselves in take care all of you and keep spinning those discs and i shall see you all very very soon <laughs>